Hi, what's up? So some of you guys may be ready to start college or just curious. So I tried putting together a video from what I learned from my first year at college. A little bit about myself. I just finished my first year of college. I am a biochemistry major. If that sounds hard to you, yes it is. Here are five things you need to know about college. Number one. So the type of college or university and if it's the right fit for you. Some of you may be wondering about whether to go to a small college or a large university. There are some pros and cons for both of them. So starting with the pros. So I went to a small private university. The classrooms are more of like a high school style. The biggest class I've ever had was maybe around 30 to 40 students and the smallest was maybe I want to say 12. Another thing is office hours. So in a small university, you're more likely to talk to your teacher more and meet them in the office hours versus bigger universities where it's much more harder to meet up with your teachers because there are so many students waiting to get in line to talk with that one professor. For community colleges, they're much more affordable to go to and they're also close to home which also brings an idea to commuting and that saves a lot of money especially for dorming because they're really expensive you're also close to home so that's another so that's another yeah and you're also close to home so that's another thing so then for bigger universities first of all they're cheaper there are more programs and classes uh, that are offered also more varieties in clubs and activities and if you're more of like a social party person, there are frats and sororities and parties. Since my school is really small, we didn't have any of that. Now for the cons! For small private universities, they're more expensive and there are less programs and less class varieties. For bigger universities, um, the class sizes are bigger. They range in like the hundreds. Yeah, that's scary. For me personally, I cannot learn in a large environment. I get easily distracted, so that's why I chose to go to a small university. And like I mentioned before, office hours is a big struggle. Like one of my friends goes to a big university and he was saying how it's so hard to get a spot in office hours because everyone's trying to go to the same professor. And you know, it's also hard to get a scholarship because there are so many students and the school cannot give out money to like every single student or like even a lot of it also visit the campus i mean you really don't know unless you visit so um before i made my decision i i was assigned between up and uw so i visited the campus of up and i was like wow i'm at home and i went to uw and i just already felt so stressed and over overwhelmed i even went in the lecture halls and the amount of students just overwhelmed me. Number two, friends and the social life. If you're worried about separating from your old high school friends and going to a big place where you don't even know, well, and you're worried about meeting new people and making new friends, well, chances are all these people are in the same position as you. It's like starting all over again in preschool or kindergarten. Go meet new people, go make friends, go talk to their friends, talk to their roommates, make friends with your RA, go talk to professors. Just branch out, make connections, do your thing. Join clubs, get involved with sports. Um, I don't know if all the universities had this. No, they don't. My university had like a freshman workshop where they grouped all the people with the similar majors together and put them in one classroom and that's where I met most of my friends you know we're all science majors <laughs> also it's easier for kids who stayed in dorms to get in touch with other people because um, there are lots of activities that you guys do together versus someone who commutes like me and you just really stay at home and you do nothing but um, but I'm pretty sure your friends will welcome you to stay in their dorms anytime and you can just hang around with them or something. So if you're dying to go talk to that one person, just do it. Go right up to them, start a conversation. Maybe you'll find some similarities. You're the apple to my eye. Okay, maybe not that way, but you get what I mean. Number three, 
grades and studying. Depending on the college that you go to, they either make it on a letter based scale or a point scale, I mean a four point scale. So statistics say that if you are an A student in high school, in college you become a B student. Like I didn't even study and I got an A! <gasps> yeah, good job! <laughs> I studied for 60 hours, and I got a C! Ha! Yeah! You still passed! Well, you know what they say, don't be part of the statistics. It's not really true for everyone, it's just, it really depends on how you study, how you prepare yourself for the test, and all that kind of stuff. Which brings us to tests. So, in high school, you're taught to memorize the details and regurgitate. But in college, it's more of like, what's the general idea of this topic? And that's what teachers really want you to know. Um, it really depends on the professors too. And then study groups. I found it more helpful when I studied by myself first and found out where my weaknesses were. And that's when I moved into study groups where we will discuss the ideas and topics before a test. It's also important to find out how you learn and how you study. So. So like for an example, um, I learn better visually and also by speaking because that helps me memorize it and also when I write things down. So like the night before a test, I would talk to one of my friends over the phone and we would just go over like the study questions and uh, we would talk, discuss about some stuff and then I would write things down and it helps both of us. With some study tips, I found out more effective when I review the material right after a lecture because the stuff is still fresh in your mind versus when I would study materials like the night before a test just forget everything I found a significant difference in my grades and test scores so remember that some teachers also post their notes and powerpoints online so take advantage of that as well I keep doing this. Okay, number four, stress. So stress is huge in college. It's, I know it's hard for the first semester because you're new to everything and you're independent and you're not around your parents that much. Your grades drop at a certain point, your scholarship money gets taken away and then money and student loans and debt and uh, you know, it's, it's crazy. What I learned was time management. I find it really helpful to get a planner because it helps you with planning things. Basically stress yourself, find a hobby, do something that you like, you know, like to get your mind off of things. Talk to a friend, call your parents, talk to one of your professors. Also go to the health center, work it out at the gym, lift weights, yeah. Number five, money. When it comes to college, everyone is worried about money. So where does it come from? So how can you get help from this? Well, first of all, scholarships. Um, I know they're really hard to get, so just apply as much as you can every year, every summer, just any time. You can also find some from your school website. Um, be careful of scams. Don't just go on random websites that you don't even know. And if you have to pay money to get money, you know, that's a big no-no. Also, if you don't know what work study is, it's like working while you're in school and getting paid. So usually your school would have like a job listing and that's not where all the jobs are. Um, you have to go talk around well, you have to go ask people and talk around, talk to your professors, they may have some positions that they want you to take, so like, you can be a TA or research for them, go ask the library, go ask um, the food people, well food people, cafeteria. Also, don't forget to apply for financial aid, go to FAFSA. You can also save money by transferring your AP credits, but also remember that not all the credits transfer so make sure to go to your school website and look at what credits transfer because I made this mistake too. Um, if 
if it doesn't meet your school's requirements, so like for core classes, it just goes to your electives. And some schools require you to, to go through all their programs and they don't want you to skip any of their classes. So also watch out for that. Textbooks. Well, I can tell you one thing. Get them off Amazon or from people you know. You can just borrow textbooks from like upperclassmen. Um, generally, if you buy them from the school website, they're more expensive. And also, you can also put them into good use. For example, my camera stand, they're just textbooks. <laughs> I hope you guys found this helpful, and if not, then I hope you found it somewhat helpful. Good luck to those of you who are starting college for the first time, and those of you who are still waiting, well, study hard, stay in school, stay amazing. Thanks for watching, bye!